We went on manoeuvres from London. We were hurriedly moved uh, in about March, beginning of April 1939. And we went down to Camberley on army manoeuvres and training. And at this point, the war had started? Yeah. Uh, it was a phony war, you know? All bluster, propaganda. Uh, sirens would go, no aircraft around. It was futile. But we had to train the conscripts. Who was fighting at this point? What countries were involved? Which countries? Only um, Germany and Poland. Uh, England had declared war, as France had declared war against Germany. But nothing had happened. Very few aircraft ever came over England, uh, and life went on in a, in a silly way. You know, dim lights, little food, all rations. Why had England and France both declared war on Germany? Because they had a pact with Poland, which they both countries had signed some years previously, that if Poland was ever attacked uh, by anyone, that both England and France would go to Poland to protect it. Now, how the hell they were going to do this when Poland was landlocked, except for the northern end of the Baltic Sea? Heaven knows. I don't. I don't think they knew themselves. <laughs> but that was diplomacy. War came, of course. Germany overran uh, Poland, and England and France declared war. And they just sat down. And that was it. Nothing was happening. Then Whitsuntide came, 1940. And leave came, leave time came. And uh, leave was given to most of us because we'd been practicing maneuvers and exercising. And I went home. Of course, my parents were living in Gloucestershire. Eh? So I caught the train from Paddington uh, and through Swindon and to Gloucester and, and I was home. Most of the regiment at that time were Welsh people like myself, but they were born and living in Wales and they caught a different train to me. Now, I didn't know until after Whitson, which was the, uh, about the second week of May, uh, the holiday was finished. I spent three or four, almost four wonderful days at the Portsmouth with my parents, and it was very, very hot. I always remember it was very hot during the May and June and July of 1940. And I got back from a wonderful holiday. And as soon as I set foot into the, the camp, when I met the warrant officer of my company, he said, put yourself under open arrest, cook. I said, what the hell for? I've done nothing wrong. I just come on holiday. He said, for that very fact, jumping off the train. I said, what train? <laughs> he said, the train and that's the what's the weekend? I had just a minute. My parents and my home is not in Wales. I didn't catch any train to go to Wales. I caught the train to go to Gloucester. And I said I spent the time with my parents in Stonehouse, Gloucestershire. I said, I didn't jump off a train. I said, what happened? Why? And then he told me. What had happened is that the train and where most of the regiment had got on was stopped in Swindon, turned around and brought back again, and most of the regiment were sent on a destroyer to Holland to rescue the Queen of Holland, Queen Wilhelmina, her consort, family and jewels, and brought back to England. The war had really started now. Germany had invaded the lowlands whilst I was at home on holiday. So all hell broke loose. And I was told, I, I lost a couple of friends, burned badly and a couple of them dead in Holland. 
and that was the end of that period. But we continued teaching recruits. Uh, I have to go back to when, like the warrant officer said, put himself under open arrest because of what I told him. He said, "Well, he, could, all right. he verified the fact where I lived, and that was it. it was not, I wasn't under open arrest. Open arrest means that I couldn't go outside. Open arrest means that." You can't do what you want to do, you can't go outside, you can't go and get a beer, you can't do anything, you, you, it, you're confined. Well, that didn't happen because I'd done nothing wrong. And we continued our manoeuvres. Then we were out on manoeuvres one day when the platoon said to me, hey, Sarge, look, the uh, quarter bloke's in front, quarter bloke being the quartermaster, the same man that put, told me to put open arrest. Hmm. Signaling, and he had his hands on his head, which means close, which means I want you. Just that fact of putting your hands on your head. This is what I want. So we approached him, and we got up to him, and then I halted the platoon, sat down, and I went up to him. And he said, "The exercise is off. Go back to camp, and you'll be told what to do. What's happening? Go back to camp, and you'll be told what to do." So okay. So I told the squad or the platoon. So we all went back. The recruits, conscripts were damn glad because if most of them were carrying wooden guns. They didn't have real guns. We didn't have that. Didn't, uh, yeah, we didn't have enough guns. They were carrying wooden ones. So you hadn't even been trained using real guns? No. I, I had, because I was an instructor. But most of the recruits didn't. They had wooden guns. But the army knew that you could be going to war. Well, we were already at war. But wouldn't they at least give you the supplies? Didn't have it. At that time, I mean, now I, I'm talking some 60, 70 years later, we were the, probably the most ill-equipped army in the whole world. We had nothing. Nothing. Except a tin hat. I had a rifle, and most of the recruits didn't. They didn't know what the hell a grenade was, or how to defuse it, fuse it. They didn't know what a lobster was. And a lobster then isn't a lobster to eat. <laughs> it's to lob a grenade. No. Very ill-equipped. 